I just finished sharpening this copper nail and all I use is a file and just go across it. And I also make sure that I have a pretty good amount of length sticking out. I think that one of the biggest problems people run into when they first start flint napping is that their point isn't sharp enough and they don't have enough of it sticking out. So now let's get back to the piece. And again, I'm going to start popping off little flakes starting at the tip and working in one direction on one side. Now these don't look like they're being driven in very far, and they're not, but over time, going around this a couple times, I'm definitely going to get more and more flakes driven across the whole surface. Be very gentle with this, and your first line of flake scars is only going to be maybe about a quarter of an inch in. You're trying to get a bevel, trying to get a bevel on this, and over time, you're gonna be able to drive flakes further and further. Also, you're gonna get cut. These little pieces of glass are super sharp. So maybe have first aid kit on hand, wash it, all that good stuff. But you're gonna get cut. Hey, okay. I'm just grinding that so that it's not too sharp. And so now, I'm just gonna continue going around this whole face with one row of flakes, and then I'll grind it and then flip it over and do the other face. This is what round one looks like. You notice I got flake scars going in maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch in on this face. And now I'm gonna abrade the edges and then do the same thing on this face. Okay, I'm done with the first round on each side. And this is something that took me a long time to learn. So you want to make sure that what you're picking at, what you're going to pressure flake, is below the center line. So right here, this would be a good one to try. But basically, I'm going to start up here at the tip, and I'm going to start driving flakes across the face into the piece very gently. Got a nice sharp pressure flaker, and instead of going down, I'm going in and down. All right, I'm taking a break just to show you. See, now these flakes are going deeper, almost to the halfway point. And as we continue to do this around this face, and then around this face, those flakes are gonna meet in the center, and then we'll worry about the shape. You see that the flakes still aren't meeting in the middle, but I'm making progress, and it's becoming more lens shape. So that's what you want. So I'm just going to keep abrading. Now abrading is important too. If I want to run a flake across this face, I want the center line to be low so that it's against that face. So when I abrade, I abrade this way and it'll break the flakes off in this direction and lower the center line to that side. And you can be pretty rough with this. All right, you notice how that brought the center line over here towards that shiny face. So here's our center line. Look at how I brought it down, especially right there. That's what you want. In fact, here and here, I'm gonna abrade it a little bit more and move that center line up. All right, pretty good. So now I'm gonna go along here, peck from this direction down into this direction, and the flakes should start traveling further. Now this is starting to look more like an arrowhead. My flake scars are almost meeting in the center, and I've got a rough triangular shape, so I'm just gonna keep doing exactly what I've been doing, Oh, 
Okay, we're in the home stretch. My flake scars have almost completely gone across and met in the middle. I've almost got it thinned out to where I want it. And I've got it rough into a triangle shape. I want to point out that I just took a break and sharpen this again. You might need to sharpen two or three times just when you're doing one little point because you really need to have very, very, very precise control right here. You see that little thing? And very gentle and always make sure at this point that if you're going to flick this little thing, make sure that it's below the center line. And at this point, instead of driving in, let me show you, instead of driving in, you can kind of flick down. Don't be surprised if you break it at this point. And now I'll just put some finishing touches on the edges and I'll show you how to do the notches. I just sharpened this almost into a needle point, not quite a needle point. And now I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get those notches in without breaking it. So let me show you what I'm gonna do up close. I'm just gonna hold it against the pad and I find the spot where I want a notch. So I'm gonna do my notch right here. Put the point in here and that's one little tiny notch. I could have done it better, but I was holding it up for the camera. So let's do another one. Okay, that's all it is. Now, if you look, I've got a little indentation, got a little indentation right here. So I flip it over and I just keep working that same little indentation without touching either side. Okay, that's important. And you might need to flip it over and just make it a little more obvious. There's a lot that could be taught as far as notching, but if you get something like that your first couple times, you're doing great. This is gonna be fine. I'm gonna stop here instead of pressing my luck and trying to make this sharper, thinner, or making the notches deeper. Think about it, if you're putting this on an arrow, right, you only need a little bit of an indent to tie that, to haft it on. And if it's not super thin like a razor blade, that's absolutely fine. If it's got a little tiny curve into it, that's fine. You put a bunch of these on a bunch of sticks and you start shooting them at animals and they're gonna work, okay? And use your imagination as far as what shape you want, but just a basic triangle and it's got a nice sharp edge with a nice point and have fun.